with the increasing number of positives in Kibra, uh, what, what, what is being uh, considered. The increasing numbers, of course, continue to concern us. Kibra is, uh, is, is, is one of those informal settlements that we have been very concerned about. And there are a number of informal settlements uh, in, in our urban areas. We are all very aware of the conditions in those informal settlements. We are also aware of the livelihoods of people who live in those settlements. These are basically people who live from day to day having the need to be able to go out and work and bring back something that the family uh, can eat that day. So the circumstances surrounding informal settlements and the considerations that will need to be looked at and are being looked at are slightly different from some of the other areas that we have talked about before, where we have seen we have been able to put some measures. It's a slightly different area and it needs a different look before we can be able to come up with uh, a plan on what we need to do there. But clearly, uh, it's, it's, it's something that is under discussion. It is something that we are looking at very carefully to see how we can approach containment of the spread of the virus in situations like that. Because today it may be Kibra, tomorrow it may be Madare, or somewhere else. And we know that those scenarios are likely to unfold as we move forward. OK, let me go to, let me now get to the statistics of the day. Today we have recorded 127 positives from a test pool of 2,247 samples. This now brings the total of confirmed positive cases to 2,989 from 100,683 samples tested so far. And the cumulative number of recoveries to 873. We would have wished to be discharging more patients than admitting. This, however, is not the case it is for today, because we have discharged 24 people who have recovered from the disease over the last 24 hours. And as I said earlier, this brings the total number of discharges to 873. We are registering a number of positives among tech truck drivers whether along the Northern Corridor or even along the, the borders with, uh, with Tanzania. And, uh, of course, when you deal with truck drivers, it is a, several considerations come into play because truck drivers are also part of, uh, they are involved in the trade that exists between the states and the flow of cargo across borders. Seth, you yourself know how much time we have spent in trying to engage neighbors so that we could come to a uniform and agreed upon protocol on how we manage these truck drivers and how we ensure that uh, while they will be COVID free as they cross borders, that at the same time, uh, the movement of traffic and cargo is not unnecessarily hindered. And this is why uh, Kenya, in fact, said that for, uh, we are the, uh, the first country, I think, in the region that said we will require our truck drivers to actually be tested before they depart on their journeys across borders. 48 hours before they depart, that they need to be tested. As they move on to their journey, they have a COVID-19 free certificate which is acknowledged across the border and they are able to move in. And I think that, that is generally still the point, uh, point of agreement. Uh, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of a while, I think, to streamline this process because we still have uh, truckers who embark on their journey without a COVID-19 certificate and then end up at the border point where then they have to be held up and wait for testing either on our side or in certain cases even on the Ugandan side.